hi and welcome to this video today i'm going to show you what we are going to have for christmas lunch as i said we're having a christmas series throughout the whole of december and i'm going to show you what we're having for christmas breakfast lunch dinner snacks drinks and all that so today we are concentrating on christmas lunch and if you like this kind of content don't forget to subscribe and welcome so if you're busy like me you're trying to juggle mom life work business taking care of yourself marriage and all that sometimes christmas can be a hassle so what i'm doing this year is i'm focusing on simple easy recipes that we can make at home for christmas and that we can make in advance that will save you time on christmas so that you're able to enjoy time with your family these are really simple dishes and i think you will enjoy them so today what i'm going to show you our christmas lunch menu is we're going to have beef biryani and we're going to have some honey glazed chicken and then for salads we will have a carrot and pineapple salad plus a coleslaw and we are going to have chapati but i will not show you the chapati recipe today because it's a bit long but i will make a video soon about how to make chapati but basically that's it so beef biryani chicken uh coleslaw carrot and pineapple salad and the rice that comes with the biryani and chapati so let me start with the beef biryani so remember we are also having a christmas giveaway and today is the first day that we are going to pick a winner so don't forget to watch till the end of the video and see if you are the lucky one merry christmas how cool is christmas so stay tuned and we'll have one lucky viewer so what we need for the biryani will be this i have my beef here and i have salt onions garlic potatoes tomatoes then i have pilau masala uh, tomato paste i have a mixed spice like roiko i have uh, maziwa mala or fermented milk i have a lemon a large one we're going to need its juice and i have green peppers i also have paprika and onion powder and lastly i have ginger the first thing we're going to do is we're going to marinate the beef so that it can soften up as we continue dealing with the rest of the ingredients okay so let me just move this aside bring, the, bring in my large bowl so we have already pre-chopped the beef and I'll just pour it into my container here and because we are a large family we are making a large batch of biryani and you know I I'm a huge proponent of not, not just cooking one meal. So make it, and this one freezes really well. Okay. So as you can see, my beef is already cut up. So I'm going to put in the spices. Get my spoon here. So spices are really be, very uh, dependent on what you like. So let me start with the onion powder about a tablespoon I have my measuring spoons but this one I'll just eyeball because you can't go wrong with this okay then I'll put in some paprika I don't think there's anything I cook in this house without paprika I need to find it all right then I'll put in some pilau masala. Generous portion. Okay. Lastly, I'll put in my, my garlic. And to all this, because my beef is a lot, I'm going to add one and a half liters of maziwa mara. I almost called it masai mara. So, here we go. So I'll put in three bottles of half liter. Okay. 
actually think a little will be enough. Let me mix first and have a look. So mix everything up together. So what the yogurt does is it tenderizes the meat. If you want, you can also grate some raw popo or papaya, depending on where you come from. It's also good for tenderizing beef. But I'm just going with a mazewa mala. You can also put yogurt. On this channel, we've already learned how to make our own yogurt at home. If you haven't checked out that video, please do so. I will link it to this one. It's very easy. All right, look at that. Yes. So that one, we can leave it to marinate for anywhere from one hour, two hours, six hours. It's really up to your preference. In the interest of time, I'll just marinate it for half an hour. Okay, so let me cover that. We continue with the rest of our cooking. So what I have here is I have about four large potatoes. You could toss them with food color, but I'm not such a fan of food color unless I absolutely have to. So you could toss the potatoes with food color because we need them to turn a bit, but I'm not such a fan of food color unless I have to, so I'm going to put some paprika. So I'll just drizzle it on top, just a little bit. You want them to turn slightly orange, all right? That's good enough for me. Okay. And then we're going to deep fry them. Not to cook them all the way through, but just to give them a crispy outer coating. And then I'll show you what we're going to do next. So what I have here in my hot oil are the onions. I'm going to deep fry them first. And then I will remove them. And then that's when I'm going to put the potatoes that we have coated in paprika. So they've been going for about five minutes. We, don't, we want them to be crisp and golden without turning too dark. So it's a game of patience. So the onions are nicely browned. So I'm going to remove them from the oil. Put them on a plate lined with kitchen paper towels to drain off the excess oil. Then in this same oil, I'm going to fry our potatoes. Again, we're not going to fry them until they're cooked. We just want to give them a crisp outer coating. Oh, this smells so good already. So we give our oil about 30 seconds to get back up to temperature. So that's okay. Then let me put in our potatoes. Remember, our beef is still marinating in the yogurt and spice mix. It's going to be really yummy once it's ready. So 
about three minutes on each side. We just want to get a nice crisp coating. We don't want to cook them all the way through. Okay, put them aside. Now I'll take this off the fire. Let's put it aside. And I'll take a large pot. Scoop out some of the oil because it's already really nicely flavored. And this is what we are going to use to make the rest of our dish. That's about enough. Don't need too much. All right. So in the hot oil, we're going to put in some ginger. Look at that. Really nice ginger. I love ginger, so I'm always finding myself putting quite a generous amount. So I'm putting some more lao masala. A little bit more onion powder. And a generous portion of dry Because our beef is a lot. We have a lot of beef. So then fry the spices up. And the hot oil. Sticking to my pot. So to this I'm going to add my tomatoes. So the next thing I'm going to put is our tomato sauce, rather tomato paste, about two large tablespoons. I'm going to stir that in. <laughs> to this, I will add green peppers. And now I'm going to add our marinated meats. It already smells so good in here. So here's our meat and spices and mala. So the secret to a good biryani is to let it cook for a while.
we're going to let this simmer for a good one hour to one and a half hours so that all the sauces and the juices can incorporate we have a nice nice biryani for our Christmas also at this point I am going to add in some salt and our potatoes our potatoes will come in after about half an hour so that they don't turn into mush look at that this we are going to eat this is our lunch it's going to be great okay I will put in some salt and also half of our fried onions. Check back on it in half an hour when we put our five potatoes, but it already smells so good. Now we are going to make a lovely cumin rice that will go with our beef biryani. So this is so simple and so delicious. I have some ghee here. You can also use butter or any cooking oil of your choice. I'm going to melt this in my pot. So I have melted the ghee and I'm going to put in my cumin seeds. We just want to fry up the cumin seeds for about a minute or so. Yeah, that's good. And here, I have one and a half cups of rice, one and a half large cups of rice, already washed and ready to cook. So I'll just stir it in and fry it for a few minutes before I put in my three cups of water. The cumin and the ghee adds a really nice flavor to the rice. All right. If you don't have the cumin seeds, you can also use the cumin powder. But I find the seeds add a really nice color as well so now I have three cups of water to add And I'm going to put in some salt to taste. So. That's it for now for the rice. 
all we have to do now is let it boil we'll come back to it in a few minutes If you're liking this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like. And if you know someone who might find this useful, don't forget to share. I'm going to make a really fresh and simple carrot and pineapple salad, which is great to have as an accompaniment for lunch. And all we need for this is freshly grated carrots. I have my pineapples here, which we have chopped. I have some raisins. And if you want, you can also put some nuts of your choice. Here I have some almonds. And that's it. We are also going to make a dressing with our apple cider vinegar. We have some olive oil. You can use any oil of your choice as well. You can use sunflower and um, honey. Okay. So to make this salad very, very easily. This is great for lunch, for our Christmas lunch. We are planning to enjoy this. So let me just start with the carrots. Put them straight into the bowl. I think I might have grated too much carrot, so yeah, I think that's enough. Then to this I'll add our pineapple. All right, together with its juices, really yummy. Then I'll add a handful of raisins and our almond. The almonds add a really nice crunchy taste and nutty as well. So before we mix this, we're going to just make the dressing and just mix everything together. So I have my mixing bowl here. Let me start with apple cider. I'll put a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar or any vinegar. You can also use lemon juice, that's okay too. Right, then I have my olive oil. And to this we'll add some honey. This honey is quite new, we haven't opened it yet. Alright, there we go. Okay, I'm forgetting to open. Yeah, about put a cup. Oops. Oops. Now I whisk. It's always a good idea to taste your dressing before you put it into your salad. So I will drizzle this over my salad. Just put in as much as you want or as little as you want. You can even have it without dressing. That's okay. And then I toss. To add a bit of color, I would also put in some dania. 
freshly chopped coriander but you don't have to still looks amazing I believe it tastes even better than it looks And the good thing about these salads is that if you're making them for Christmas lunch, you can make them the day before and just put them in your fridge. Actually, they taste better the day after. There we have it. So we're just going to plate this. Okay. So I think I'm... Okay, with serving it with this bowl. So, here we go. And of course, you know I have to taste it because it's just looking so good. I kind of wish I had some roasted cashew nuts. Mm, that would be so good. So let's taste this. So it's time for a taste test. All right. Looks really nice. First of all. so bright mm. it tastes really really good and then the almonds fantastic let me know what you think of this salad in the comments below our cumin rice is almost ready we're going to serve it with our biryani so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of water as you can see and then I'll add some orange food color. Okay. Now this is one area where I will gladly use food color. Just a little bit. Okay. Take a spoon and mix it up. See, just like that. Okay. Cold water is fine. to cover your rice for about five minutes and wait for the that little water that you've added to evaporate then i'll show you what we'll do next our rice is now ready okay so the next thing is to plate it but first You know, when I started seeing this multicolored rice, I used to wonder how people used to make it. Now, some people, when they make biryani, they like to mix the rice together with the beef. I prefer not to because I'm cooking for kids and kids can be picky sometimes. We have one child who does not like his food mixed at all, at all. The last thing we are going to put are our fried onions. Remember we left some? So 
So there is our lovely, lovely cumin rice. This we're going to serve it with our beef biryani. Let me know what you think. If you think it looks great, punch the like button. Okay, or okay, just tap it gently. Look at that. The colors are amazing. This will be so good to put on your table at Christmas lunchtime. And it was so easy, right? Look at that. Coleslaw is such an easy salad to make and it rarely disappoints. And the good thing about it also is that you can make it the day before and then put it in the fridge. In fact, it tastes better after it's spent a night in the fridge. So to make coleslaw, what we need, we just need some cabbage here that has been shredded. We need some carrots. We need black pepper, sugar, mayonnaise, apple cider, vinegar, and then some salt and some milk, all right? And it's basically a five minute thing. What we are going to do is, let me first make the dressing, then we're going to mix up the rest, okay? So I'm going to put here some apple cider vinegar, about a quarter of a cup. Then I'm going to put in about two tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to put in a pinch of salt. And I'll sprinkle in some black pepper. And lastly, our mayonnaise. And about five heaped tablespoons. I will whisk it, mix it gently. And to make it a bit more runny, I'll add just a little bit of milk so that you can coat the cabbage nicely. And as I have said before, it is very important to taste your dressing. So I'll take my mixing bowl, I'll pour in some cabbage, so before I start mixing it up I'll just put the dressing, you don't have to put all of it, just about as much as you feel you need, although we like our coals look quite creamy here. Let's first see how far that takes us. And don't be surprised if you put it in the fridge and find that it is it has more liquid than you initially put in because cabbage has its own water naturally, so it that water comes out of the cabbage with time. And our coleslaw is ready. And this is a great way to encourage kids to eat vegetables and especially raw vegetables which is which are really healthy just make a nice salad and make it yummy and you will not stop them from eating so let me play that and show you the final product Look 
at that. How healthy does that look, first of all? Amazing, I love it. It looks really good. And one night in the fridge will only make it better. Actually, just, it just ages better. Okay, look at that. So now, we taste it. Let's see how this is. Mm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. So our biryani is ready. It's been cooking for a, about one and a half hours, slightly more. And it's so thick and delicious. Look at that. And the smell. Wow. Oh, wow. This will go amazingly with our rice. So, I want to put it in my serving bowl. So again, the only hard part about making biryani, if you can even call it hard, is the initial part. But once you've mixed everything, really, it only takes you about half an hour and then you just put it on your stove and let it simmer away for a good 60 to 90 minutes if you want it to be really thick and saucy like this but if you brush it it won't be as thick how does that look i think it looks amazing great biryani as i said before i did not mix it with the rice because some of my kids don't like their food mixed. It's like a taboo. So, yeah, I'm a peace-loving Kenyan. So, I cook them separately and those who want to mix it can mix for themselves. So now, I really want to taste it. So let's see. Oh, it really smells good. Really smells amazing. And the beef is so tender, it literally melts in your mouth, which is good because it's easy for the kids to chew. Honey glazed chicken is one of those dishes that when you present to your guests or your family you look like such a pro and yet it is so easy to make you won't believe it. So today I'm going to show you how to do that and it is part of the Christmas special that we are running this month as one of the meals that we are going to serve for our family on Christmas. So what you need uh, for the honey glazed chicken is you need your chicken of course. I have removed the skin and the excess fat. We try not to have that here. Then you're going to have salt and black pepper, some onion powder, uh, some soy sauce, some brown sugar. Uh, you need honey and garlic and some butter. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to preheat your oven to a high temperature of about 200 or 220 degrees celsius and then you're going to start prepping your chicken so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to season your chicken with salt a generous amount of salt hmm. Please make sure your hands are washed thoroughly before you do this, okay? Then, a generous amount of black pepper. La 
lastly a generous amount of onion powder As you can see, I've already lined my baking tray with aluminium foil. So then you're just going to mix in all the seasonings. Make sure every bit of chicken gets this, okay? And gets it on both sides. And before this, I washed my chicken with some water with vinegar and lemon juice okay then you're going to put it just put your chicken there you want to put it in the oven 200 to 220 degrees celsius for about 20 to 25 minutes So now the chicken is ready. I'm just going to put it in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes at 200 to 220 degrees. So let me do that and I will show you how to make the glaze. We are now going to make the glaze for our honey glazed chicken and I'll show you how easy and simple it is. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put, because my chicken is a lot, I'm going to put around 150 grams of butter into my pot. So I want the butter to melt. And again, if you don't have butter, you can use ghee. Ghee is just clarified butter, so yeah. So we want the butter to be well melted, but not burnt. Butter has a, the smoking point is really sensitive. Our butter is fully melted. You can cook it for about six to seven minutes if you want it to have a, a nutty flavor. But I just make it like this because it's going to be really amazing and yummy anyway. So I'll just give it like two to three minutes. Let it brown just a little bit, not too much. So I'm happy with that. The next thing I'm going to put is our garlic. We just grated the garlic using a hand grater. And fry the garlic into my butter. Now garlic burns really easily, so we need to make sure we don't burn it. That's okay. To this, we are going to add two thirds of a cup of honey. And remember, my chicken is a lot, so feel free to adjust the amount to suit the amount of chicken that you're making. To this, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of soy sauce. And a quarter cup of brown sugar. The last thing I'm going to add is just a teeny tiny pinch of salt. Because remember the soy sauce also has a bit of salt. Plus we already seasoned our chicken before we put it in the oven. So we want our blades to simmer until it has incorporated very well into each other. Oh, for about 
four to five minutes, not too much. But you really want the flavors to incorporate and to become one. So as we do all this, remember the chicken is in the oven for about 20 minutes. All right, this glaze is ready. Now let's get our chicken. I've switched off the fire. We don't want it to burn. The chicken is here after 20 minutes in the oven. This is how it's going to look. If you find like it has a bit of water, you can just pour off the water or just give it like five more minutes if the water is going to evaporate. So now here's our glaze also, it's quite ready. What you want to do is take every piece of chicken, then you want to coat it in the nice glaze, okay? Make sure it gets glaze throughout comes out like this then you put it back on the tray okay so we are going to do this for all the pieces of chicken i'll show you our next move it's quick and easy all right there we go we just pour the glazing over so at this point, you want to put back your tray in the oven for another 20 minutes. Okay, then for 20 minutes, we're going to take it and we're going to twist and reglaze. Then we're going to put it back for another 20 minutes and I will show you face. 20 minutes are over and this is how our glazed chicken looks like. You can see the color is really nice. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to just turn it and twist it like this. We want to bake it for a further 20 minutes just to make sure the glaze gets really in there. Okay. So there we have it. And then what to do is just get a spoon and spoon the glaze over. About here. I want everything to be well coated. Look at that. Okay, now that's ready to go into the oven for another 20 minutes and then we will look at the final product. So here is our honey glazed chicken. Look at that. Oh wow, it really looks nice. It smells even better than it looks. Yep, so service to your guests or to your family on Christmas and your place will be the most favorite place for everyone to come. So let me just plate that. Mm -mm -mm. Yum, yum. And there is our honey glazed chicken. How amazing does that look? And the smell is heavenly. There you have it. Please try this recipe. Let me know what you think. And now it's time to taste it. I'm really enjoying this part, I must say. Let's take this one. Let's see. Oh. You see how shiny that looks? Let's have a taste.
Yeah. Very good. Mm, mm, mm. No, that's a Merry Christmas. Hi guys, it's Friday night and I'm so excited to announce our first winner of the giveaway this Christmas. The first person who actually tagged me on Instagram showing me their Christmas decoration and beautiful, tiny but beautiful Christmas tree. So our first giveaway goes to Kangahi Kangahi. Yay, I'm so excited for you. I can't really shout, the kids are sleeping, so I have to be really quiet. Please DM me on Instagram and we'll organize how to get you your beautiful fragrance. If you haven't participated in the, in the giveaway, please send me a photo, rather, post a photo of your Christmas decorations on IG and tag me at Susie's Homestead. And next week, it could be you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye.